What's up guys? Today I'm going to show you how to make Tech House with a beard. No, 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 only joking. I'm going to show you how to make Tech House in the style of Jamie Jones, who is the founder of the record label Hot Creations, and he's also part of the group Hot... Hot... Hot something. I'm going to edit that in. Hot natured. So obviously we have just started 2021. I'm super excited as I always am at this time of year. I also want to know what to cover on this channel this year. From you guys, I want to build it. I want to help give you more value. So I'm thinking collaborations, maybe four producers, try one sample, like whatever it is that you really want to see on this channel, please let me know in the comments below and I'm gonna try and make it happen. Anyway, today, Tech House in the style of Jamie Jones and Hot Creations record label. It's kind of this warehouse vibe. So this is what we're gonna be covering today. We will be covering that Tech House kick and bass. And then you can see this bus processing just gives it extra punch, extra kick. We will be covering the percussion. We'll be doing some sound design from scratch. And we have Frank Sinatra to thank for this. And all of this is just in the stock plugins in Ableton Live 10. And I want you to be able to follow along with the software that you already own. Don't forget, you can download the project file and all the samples completely free below this video. If you like it, if you dig this channel, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell that sounds just like my really annoying phone there. Anyway, without further ado, let's hop into the door. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is select the tempo. So I'm going to choose one, two, eight for that Jamie Jones vibe. Then we are going to work on the kick. So you can use MIDI for the kick, but I'm going to use audio just so I can show you the benefits of that. You can use either, but I like audio because then you can actually shape the kick exactly how you want it. So let's go into my favorites and look for a kick. Something like that, not too, not too in your face, not too banging, because that's not the vibe we're going for. And the Jamie Jones vibe is kind of a mix between techno and house. So yeah, you might call that tech house. Uh, it's kind of this, got this cool warehouse feel to it. So let's turn that kick down as well so we don't end up with clipping on the master channel. So it's cool using audio for kicks because then you can like shape it exactly how you want like this, which means that we've got space for the bass line to breathe through. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use that kick that I just made. Tightens this up a bit. And then we are going to work on the bass line. Now for this kind of sound, I'm going to be using, mm, let's see, I'm going to be using a sampler actually or a simpler. And that's because I want that kind of gritty vibe that comes from using a sample. So if we find a random bass sample, um, I've got these packs from years ago. Uh, that's kind of cool. And we're going to shape it slightly. So the first thing we want to do is change it so that only one note can play at a time. And that would be voices one. So you're not bleeding into each other. And then we are going to just jam out And the idea of a tech house bass line is they're usually quite close within um, a few semitones on the different notes. You haven't got massive big jumps um, as you might in a trance or something like that. So I'm just fiddling around on the keyboard really close to each other. So let's actually just program that in because I'll show you how you could do that. Uh... And it's a good idea to um, have syncopation in a bass line when it comes to house because that's where the groove comes from. So if you've got a beat on every note like that, it sounds very, you know, like that. So what you can do is change the grid to be sixteenths and then you can just shift it over one and just kind of feel the groove out. Like so. So you can see it's just within a couple of semitones of each other.
And that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to go back down again. And then we go back to the original note and that's it. And we could drop that down an octave and make it sound even kind of grimier. So let's grab them all, hold shift and press down. So that's kind of cool. I think we're just going to loop that as the bass line, so duplicate that. And next we are going to kind of come up with some cool tech house groove. So I'm just going to build this up from separate drum sounds. So let's go to claps, find something that sounds really short and... That's quite cool. Let's just use that. Um, and it's all about sound selection and getting the groove to work together. Uh, let's see, I've just lost where that should be. There we go. And we're just going to program a beat in on every other kick. Duplicate that. It's not rocket science, guys. I forgot to name this bad boy. Uh, I'm going to call this, let's call it mm, Jamie Jones, tic tac toe, tic tac toe, tic tac toe. Let's do that, except we're going to spell tick like that because it's like tech. I don't know why I'm doing this, but it's done. You're going to have to live with that. So next we are going to add some interesting rhythm like with a couple of drum sounds and then just create that groove in a loop. So let's go to, oh yeah, clav, that'll do. That's cool. So we just drag that in. And we're going to create like a, yeah, a groove. And let's just duplicate that. Whoops, wrong place. So select, duplicate. And we are going to select a, mm, I want a rim shot sound. <clears throat> so let's have a look. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, we'll use one of those. And we're just going to loop that as well. I'm not sure about that sound though. Yeah, that'll do. And what we can do now is assign some room reverb, but with a really close tight decay or delay, decay. And that's going to give it this uh, really cool roomy sound. So if we open up this button in the drum rack, open up the returns thing, you can see I've already assigned it, but you just right click, create return track, and then you use this drop down menu to assign it to one of your um, auxiliary channels. So I've got a few I already set up here. So let's now feed in some of those drum sounds to the room reverb. So we can close that one down again, and you can see we've got the controls here now. Like so. But let's go to the room reverb and then tone the decay time down a bit so it's really close. And don't worry, we're going to work on that bass line soon as well. And the way we're going to work on that bass line is we are going to double it up, actually, and we are going to use the, uh, let's just duplicate it like this. No, group with command and G, and then duplicate that chain. Uh, and then we're going to have one high up and then one low down. So for the high up one, all we need to do is go to, um, we just need to tune it up, don't we? And the way that we would do that is go to transpose 12 semitones. And now we've got the high one. 
But let's let's tweak the shape of that a bit because I'm not entirely happy with that. I like that shorter kind of feel to it. So I've just taken the sustain right down using the decay, release. And then the lower one, we can filter out um, the high frequencies. So we've just got like a sub bass. So we've still got that. We've still got that low down sound. So let's do that. We're just going to drag an EQ8, whack it on the lower one. Let's just name it so it's easier for you to see what's going on. And then we'll call this mid bass. So for the low one, we're just going to take out the high frequencies. But I'm going to tweak the um, shape as well. Oh, we're getting some distorting now. But it get, kind of gives it that grungy feel. So we're going to add some actual distortion that we're meaning to do, some intentional distortion. But let's first take out the sub frequencies of the mid bass line so it's not clashing with our sub bass, like so. Okay, let's turn down the bass line. We'll, we'll turn everything down a bit so we don't get that distortion. I'll have to turn down some of the reverb as well. There we go. Now to make this really interesting, what I'm going to do is add, this is the only plugin I'm going to use that isn't with Ableton Live 10. And I'm going to use this Ozone Imager 2, one of my go-to plugins. It's, uh, it's completely free from their website. So this is cool because you can really spread out this and make it wide. So now our ba bass line so sounds wide. And because it's just the mid bass, we're not going to run into phase cancellation issues. And let's put the kick and the bass together because this is what we're going to do to create some intentional distortion. So I'm going to call that K and B for kick and bass. And we're just going to put through um, some saturation and some compression and some EQ on this to make it sound even gnarlier. So let's get something like saturator. I'm going to turn this down with a utility before it goes into the saturation. Checking in mono. Still sounding good. Okay, now we're going to use a tiny bit of glue compressor just to tie that kick and bass together. Just turn the kick, uh, the drums off so it doesn't distract us. And then we're going to use an EQ and we're going to use it to boost some of those frequencies so we get some really punching kick and bass coming through. And if we put all that together and turn it off, this is what the difference having this processing on the bus does. So it sounds much fatter and that's what's going to give it that power in the club. So let's put those drums back on and then onto the next thing, which is some cool shaker loop to give it even more groove. Turn that bass down a touch because we're getting some distortion. Turn that down. 
it's important to make sure you don't get this um, clipping on this master channel. Feed in some reverb. You can just use the reverb as a, its own instrument when you're mixing like this. Just you can mix it in. Okay, on to the next thing, which, as I said, is going to be some cool shaker groove. Um, I'm going to just load up my splice for this. Oh, no. Okay, I haven't installed it yet. Wait, no, I have installed it. I don't know what's going on. This is what happens when you have to uh, reinstall your computer. So I'm going to just search for a shaker within my sounds, samples, drum loops. That's pretty cool. Let's let's use one like that. No, a bit too much. That's better. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and just tweak the beginning of the sample over slightly so it's a bit more in time. And I'll just loop the first bit because it kind of goes out of time after that. And it gives it a bit of, uh, yeah, a bit of groove as well. So shaker, let's color that green, the natural color for all grooves, beats and green. If you're enjoying it so far, let me know below, guys. Give me a hell yeah and Armin brother because I love that shiz. And let me know what style you want me to cover in the future. I do listen to your comments. I look for the most liked ones. And that's why um, if you've been asking something for months and months, but you're like the only person asking for it, I can't really warrant doing it because that's how it works. Okay, on to the next thing. Let's find some cool samples. So if you were Jamie Jones, uh, what is the track that I'm thinking of? I think it's called Bappy and it's got a Bollywood sample. So I'm going to use some kind of gritty old sample, but what I'm going to do to find it, I'm just going to open up my Apple Music and this is a cool uh, thing to do as well. So if you are making a track and you want a sample in it, you can just kind of play around and wait till you find a part of the sample that you of the tune that you like and you can use that as a sample. So let's just loop our track. So this is a Frank Sinatra track. So I'm just going to take a bit of sample from it because with this Jamie Jones kind of tech house style he creates different sections of the track and then he might play it four or eight times and then it'll switch to another kind of motif. So we're going to be using all of this in our arrangement very shortly. So let's load this one in, just drag and drop. And it's going to be thinking, well, Ableton's going to be uh, working out the warp, but we don't, actually don't need the warp because we want it to be a bit out of time because we just want to take a little bit of loop. So what I'm going to do to find it is drag it over, open it up a bit. And I like this beginning loop. It just works with the track. So we're going to have this as a loop. But we're going to look around as well and see if there's some other loop we can get from this. Something with a vocal, maybe. For doubt. That's cool. So if we were to loop this or duplicate this loop, we can have two different parts of this track. So you could have, let's just spread this out a bit, get some more, more arrangement on the go. So you could have it go. And the fact it's not all in the same key gives it that kind of edgy, tech house vibe, that, ba that warehouse basement feel. So 
So you could loop it twice, then you could go. And then you could, let's see, let's grab this bit and we'll work out exactly where. So let's, uh, let's move that over slightly, in fact. That's cool. And then we can switch to something else um, f using that sample. I'm not actually using the sidechain thing. I'm just going to turn it off for the time being. You probably could sidechain duck the bass. That might be a good idea. In fact, yeah, I'll do that really quickly. So. I've got my sidechain channel here, which has got the sidechain trigger. You could use something like LFO tool or Nicky Romero's kickstart, of course, but I'm just going to use everything in Ableton apart from that uh, imager. So let's just drag a compressor on to the base. Uh, that's on the kick and bass together. Oh, no, it's just the bass. Excellent. That's what we need. Sidechain, sidechain as the input. Let's just minimize that so we can see what's going on. So let's listen to the kick and bass. So you can hear it ducking now. That sounds like enough of a pump to me. Let's color that. So the second bit could be like this. Once we've got that sample, we can actually chop it up. So what we can do is we'll just take that little bit, we'll consolidate it, then we can create a sampler as well in a MIDI track. So again, I'm just going to use the simpler from Ableton. And then you can just drag this little consolidated thing. And then we've got that as a sample that we can play different notes with. So after this has gone through a few times, the loop, we can then So that's how you could use a sample to then create an yet another part of the track. But this this uh, beat's missing something. I think we need some open hats in there, some or some hats on every other beat. So we're just going to use those because they've got like a gritty feel to them again, which is what I I want in this track. So let's just put one on every other beat. Standard stuff. That's cool. I might use that. Actually, I was going to just do it on every other beat, but that's cool. And then we can put this one on every other beat then. Let's just duplicate that. Hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm just literally pulling this out of my beep. That's got some groove now. Now let's create a synth to go with this. A Jamie Jones style synth. We're just going to call it synth. See what I did there? Creative, right? Nice. Now let's grab a operator. Choose a saw wave. And this is going to be super simple. That's all we need. And I just want a bit of a, well, we just need one voice and let's do pitch bend too. Uh, 
and that and then that can be like a motif as well so yeah you're kind of grooving along to this bit let's put some room reverb on that the sample so it's all about just creating these different sections to groove in the, uh, along in the track and then you can go back to the synth just a weird And for the last synth sound, we can create, uh, let's use an operator again, but something to mix up the rhythm a bit. And we're going to use white noise for this and just turn it down a bit and then adjust the ADSR controls. If this is all a bit um, tricky for you, do consider um, taking one of my courses or joining me on the eight week masterclass because we do go into all of this stuff in a lot more depth but I'm obviously working as quickly as I can for YouTube and now we can turn up the resonance and now when we change the re frequency you get this wicked sound but we might need to throw a compressor on there because it's going to be peaking and that's just to take in any stray really loud bits see to make sure that we don't have any clipping And once again, let's turn off the samples for these four. should really be recording this. So that is how you would go about creating those different um, kind of sections of the track. And then it would be a case of obviously program them in, programming them in, which we can do a bit of now, uh, just to get this a bit of arrangement on the go. So let's just start like this by duplicating it. And we'll obviously have a break somewhere as well. So let's start out. program this synth in so this rising synth it's just going to happen every like two three four five every eight beats so let's just program it in color that same color and then click this and then adjust the midi control on the pitch bend And then you can just uh, duplicate that. You have to make sure this lock's turned off so the automation copies as well. Just turn it down a bit. And let's create like a tech house vocal as well. So let's just record from this and 
the, the 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 less enthusiastic you sound the cooler you sound and that's just the way of the world you need to know that live it enjoy it but don't show that you enjoy it and that makes it cool jamie in the house that'll do right let's make this a twisted tech house vocal um so we're just going to eq out some of those frequencies really quickly jamie in the house jamie in the house that sounds disinterested enough cool right let's get a delay on that and spread it out using what's known as the harsh effect we do that like this 100 percent wet on a delay unit feedback none take off the synth sync and deselect this coupling thing here and then it's going to allow us to have slightly different delay in each channel but really close delay so it spreads it out and sounds wide jamie in the house jamie in. oh no we need to choose ping pong as well jamie jamie in. that's too loud man jamie in the house jamie in the house now let's warp it with complex pro so we can change the formants and the pitch to make it sound even less interested okay that sounds twisted enough so now now we've twisted it a bit let's just compress it a tiny bit Ah, oh, we don't need to compress it actually that's fine and then you just have that play um, not too often basically so and then we switch and let's let's add some of those synth rhythms that we kind of were working out earlier and i'm just going to tweak the frequency as i play it in so let's record Like so. Oh no, I accidentally um, cut too much out of it. So it should be like that. Let's try that again. With the filter. Cool, so once we've done that, we're gonna just consolidate it with command J, go in there and then quantize it, make sure it's kind of all nice and in time. Again, putting on that room reverb. We just copied the first part and duplicate it though. Uh, the thing is, when it's like this, I'm not really feeling that bass line, so I'm going to change it. And the way I'm going to change it is by deleting it. And then I'm going to just kind of play in a different one. Kind of got in my head, in my head now though. Let's find one that works with this tune. Yeah, so basically it's around there is is right really. So let's record it now.
That's cool. Uh, let's tweak this a little bit. Quantize it. It's kind of the same as it was before, but I like it more. Let's tweak the um, the reverb a tiny bit. I want more more size to it. That's a bit better. So this is with no reverb. It's dry. And with and my ridiculous vocal. In fact, let's turn off this bit and we're just going to have our our rhythm. There you have it guys, that's me coming up with a Jamie Jones slash pop creation style tech house idea as quickly as possible. Obviously I haven't had enough time to do everything this track needs so I'm going to do a bit more arrangement on it, a bit more mixing and you can download the project and all the samples completely free below this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it, please share it with your friends if you like it, subscribe to my channel for videos like this each and every week, don't forget to check out the other Tech House videos that are on the screen somewhere at the moment, and until next time, cheers and happy producing. <laughs>